If we think about where AI, artificial intelligence, where it's being used in consumer technology, it's, it's really being uh, used almost everywhere to voice assistance, what we watch, what we buy, what circles of friends that we belong to. All of these things have an artificial intelligence. And so if you think about, are we able to trust that the AI is doing what we, we want it to do? My name is Edward Kim, and I'm an associate professor in the Department of Computer Science at the College of Computing and Informatics at Drexel University. And my research is at the intersection of machine learning, artificial intelligence, and neuroscience. I'm looking at broad themes in neuroscience and trying to take these ideas and improve the way that machine learning works today. So there was a student at MIT, her name is Joy, and she had a class project. She had to combine technology with art. And she decided to build a, a mirror that when she woke up uh, every day, she would look at the mirror and the mirror would give her some sort of inspiration. And so what she did, she took an off the shelf face detection classifier and it wouldn't, it wouldn't recognize her face. And so she thought about this for a while. She said, oh, maybe it's because it was trained for a specific illumination, maybe a specific transformation, rotation of her face. And so she tried all these different things. And so the only thing that did work was when she put on this white mask. Um, and, and what she found sort of in the, in the general case is that a lot of these off-the-shelf machine learning classifiers, they've been trained on heavily biased data sets where people, for example, she was a female of darker skin, these types of examples were not in the training, training data set. And so when she tried to use this machine learning model to classify her face, to detect if it's there or not, um, it wasn't able to find her. So to fix the bias, uh, in machine learning models, there are a couple things that we can do. We can uh, take some of the easy fixes that we see. So when we talk about the imbalanced data sets, we can go back to these data sets and try to uh, provide a little bit more balance in the, in the distributions. In terms of the machine learning models themselves and the, the algorithms, what we can do is try to tweak the objective function, the mathematical maximization or minimization function so that it also pays attention to other things. And number three, I think there needs to be adequate, what, what's called specification into the model. These, these models, they need to be designed in such a way that even if things like imbalanced data set exists, even if there are these issues within the model, it's, it's actually able to counterbalance that um, in, the, in the architecture, in the specification itself. And this is what we see uh, in, in human intelligence. I think getting machine learning to the next level is actually a much more difficult problem. If you think about, again, how, how, how much more advanced human intelligence is compared to these statistical pattern recognition machines, um, there, there is a large gap that we have to, to address. We need to get from like pretty good to almost perfect in order for us to trust these technologies. And I think maybe the approach and the approach that we've been taking here in, in my research lab is to look at how humans um, do perception, how the visual system works, and try to take inspiration from that. So if you, if you think about this example of face detection, this is, this is the problem that we saw with the imbalanced data sets. If you look at how humans do face detection, face perception, there's actually a very significant large cortical area within the brain called the fusiform face area that's constantly competing to represent the visual scene. And so this is why we see faces everywhere. We might see a face obviously where a face exists and also at times when a face isn't present. Imagine if you, um, you grew up in a rural village somewhere and all you saw was the faces of, of your family 
and then you went to the big city and you saw all different types of people, you, you're not going to be confused. You're not gonna look around and say, I see only these types of faces and these other faces, um, I've never seen them before. So I'm going to say that these are not humans. Uh, so you'll, you'll never see something like that in, in human intelligence. And I think that's the point that uh, we need to get to in these, in these models.